Good morning and welcome to the video for Monday, May the 11th for sixth grade. This is going to cover our new lesson, working with mean absolute deviation. And so we've been talking about using the mean uh, to find the average of our data points in a set of data. And so today we're going to talk about how we can use that to help us figure out how spread out a particular set of data might be uh, when it's graphed um, by using deviation. So deviation is the distance from our mean. And so to begin with, we're going to have what I normally refer to as the unlock the problem. This time it's called investigate. And so we are going to start by making the dot plot that charts out all of these five data points on this side. I made an extra one for team B on this side so that we can compare those as we are talking. And so to start with, uh, let's go ahead and put our points in. If you need to pause the video to do that real quick, um, after you see what's going on, go ahead and do that and then join us when we're ready. So we have our first point here. So we got a red circle for that and we are one uh, deviation point away from our mean. And so we put a one down here. So I've got another three. I'm just going to kind of write this over uh, the other one. Uh, we have one that's on four. We have two that are on five. And so this might be how my dot plot would look. And so now we need to go ahead and count how many points from our mean we are for each of these. And so I'm one point away for each of those. I am at the mean for this one, so we would represent that with a zero. And then I am one point away for each of my fives. And so I can add all of these up, divide by my number of data points to figure out the um, average mean uh, deviation that we have. So um, that would be 0.8, so 8 tenths. Uh, we're going to try to represent those as decimals as much as possible. So our absolute deviation uh, from the mean for this would be 8 tenths of a point. And so for our other set of data, we are going to graph that. I'm going to do that in green. Um, so I have a zero, so I'm going to put a zero here. I have a one. I have a four, which is on the mean. I have a seven and I have an eight. And so now I need to figure out how far from the mean I am for each of these data points. Well, I have a zero. I have one that's gonna be three points away. I have one that's gonna be four points away. So I'm gonna have a three and a four and a zero. And then I'm going to have a three and a four on this side. So that is going to give me a total of 14 over 5, if we make it look like the one that we have down here at the bottom. Um, I'm co-opting this uh, just for space, so go ahead and write it down here. I went ahead and wrote it up here. Uh, that is going to give us a total of 2 for our holes, so we can uh, count up to 10. Counting by 5s, we have 4 left over, so that's going to be represented as the fraction part of our mixed number, 4 fifths and that would translate to being 2.8. And so if we are comparing, uh, this uh, set B is going to have a larger uh, standard deviation or absolute deviation, excuse me, from the mean. I'm used to talking about standard deviations, um, which any parents that might be watching this probably remember that that's not exactly the most fun thing ever uh, for most people. So number one, which data set is more spread out? Let's go ahead and look back over. Again, everything for team A is very compact and close to the center, whereas point uh, team B, we have our points kind of spread out all over the place. And so let's talk about that again as we look at this. So we have two different teams and the heights of the players, the average distance from the mean um, for the Chargers is 2.8 and the other team, the Wolverines is 1.5. And so which set of heights would be more spread out would be the team that has the larger average distance from the mean. And that would be our the chargers for the purposes of this particular exercise. So let's take a look at our uh, make connections. Again, we're going to have one more problem that we work on here before we go to our share and show. So I'm going to give you a chance to pause. All of our points are here. 10 is going to be the mean. And so we're going to find the distance from the mean. Um, I will give you a hint. We have 12 data points here. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to. And when you're ready, go ahead and hit play and we will talk through this. So 
What I normally do is I go ahead and start from our mean, and that's going to give us three zeros. And then I've got a point here that would be one point away. And I've got four points that would be uh, two points away from our mean. I'm going to have three more twos over here. And I'm going to have a three. So adding all of these up, I'm going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Dividing that by 12 is going to give me 1.5, and, and so that would give me 1.5 for um, in years for my um, deviation. And so let's go ahead and look at our share and show problems. <clears throat> So for number one, we go ahead and we get the mean already given to us for both sides. We just need to go ahead and count either forward or backward from the mean to figure out what numbers are going to go in here. So we already have our five represented here with the two. We have two sixes. Each of those are one each. We have an eight, which is one, and we have a 10, which is going to be three. I have five data points, so I'm going to be dividing by five. So I'm going to have three, four, five, eight divided by five which is going to give us one and three fifths, which will translate to being 1.6. And so for our other side, Laura, um, I'm going to have a six plus a four plus a zero plus a four plus a six, which is going to give me 20 over five, which is going to translate to being um, four entire laps. And so the data set of Laura's laps is going to be more spread out because the mean absolute deviation of her data is larger. I guess we could also use the word greater. Uh, for number two, we are going to have the mean of seven and we can go ahead and count either forward or backward to figure out how many um, deviation points we are going to be counting up, dividing that by our number of data points. So I've got four points here, uh, seven, 10, so I'll be dividing by 10 when I'm done here. Uh, this side I'm gonna be dividing by eight. And so pause the video if you need to while you go ahead and calculate this and we'll talk through the answer when you are ready. All right, so um, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So 24 divided by 10 gives me a mean absolute deviation of 2.4. The other side, um, which I wasn't sure where the screen was there for a moment, um, I'm going to have 2, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 20, 26. And so 26 divided by 8 is going to come out to being three and two eighths, which if we change that to a decimal is going to be 3.25. <clears throat> and for number four, again, we're kind of repeating this idea that we were talking about. The larger the absolute mean deviation is, the more variance um, or um, more spread out each of our data points are in relation to the whole. So in February, our uh, deviation was 167.7. In March, it increased to 235.9. So in which month uh, did the visits to the website vary more? It would be in the month of March. And that's because it has the larger uh, mean absolute deviation. <clears throat> For number five, in April, um, the data for Scott's website visits are less spread out than in February. And so we're going to use A to represent the absolute uh, deviation for April. And we're going to write an inequality. So the inequality symbol that we would use would be less than because the value for our mean absolute deviation is going to be less in April than it was in February. And so I'm going to use F uh, to represent that. Let's go ahead and talk through the homework problems real quick, and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, be finished for the day. Uh, the homework video will come out on Tuesday, as will our next lesson in this chapter. So 
Uh, to start with, again, we're just using the same strategies for number two, number three, number four. Uh, they give us the mean. We're just working with different numbers. And we have dot plots for this one, whereas we only have the actual numbers uh, given for number two. For number five and number six, we're kind of, again, doing the same thing. Um, for <clears throat> number five, they don't give us the mean. So you'll, or excuse me, that's number six. You'll need to uh, figure out what the mean is and then you are going to have to uh, find the mean absolute deviation. And actually, it looks like number five, you may have to do that as well. Uh, for number seven, it's going to be very similar to something that you would see here. So just go ahead and make your dot plot out to the side if you need to uh, figure out what the mean is going to be, and then uh, go ahead and calculate the mean absolute deviation from there. Number one and two on the back, uh, you are going to be given the mean, so all you need to do is relate that uh, to the individual data points and then divide by the number of data points to find our mean absolute deviation. For number three, uh, what you'll be working with is this idea that I talked about, uh, I believe it was last chapter, where we are going to change all of our um, half size things um, by multiplying by two. Uh, for everything else. So we're going to change everything else to being halves as well. So I would have three halves for this one. So I would have a three. And then we're going to have oops, there we go. And then we're going to have five halves here. And so you can take your answer to that. Um, and the top number here is going to end up dividing by eight because the bottom number is going to go from two times two to four, times two to eight. And so that will give us what our volume of the rectangular prism would be for that. <clears throat> uh, for number four, you just need to figure out how many days we've accounted for. We have only 30 days in the month of September, so the number of days that are left would have to go in this last category. Uh, for number five, the mode is going to be the number that's repeated most frequently. And for number six, you'll need to find the median uh, and then go from there to figure out uh, which set of numbers will belong to the upper quartile and then find the median of that um, to get our uh, upper quartile answer. <clears throat> so those are the problems for the homework as well as the lesson for today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in Google Classroom or ask your classroom teacher. Again, the homework video for this will come out on Tuesday as will our next lesson in the chapter. So hope you have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.